So you've both talked about the importance of creating warm community, um, and particularly in congregational settings. Now, for youth ministry practitioners who are thinking, how do we recreate this space with young people in peer groups um, that they may be working with, how would you say uh, you create community um, with young people in youth groups? You know, one of the ways that we've really emphasized community at FYI is not just peer community, but adult to young person Mm -hmm. community. Um, Before Growing Young, we did some research called Sticky Faith, where we studied 500 youth group graduates during their first three years in college. We looked at 13 different youth group participation variables, 13 things that a typical youth group will offer. And, you know, you'll be glad to know that being involved in service and justice work was correlated with mature faith in high school and college. So is studying the Bible. So is being involved in student leadership. I mean, overall, it's very encouraging. But actually, of the 13 variables, the one that was most correlated with mature faith in high school and college was intergenerational worship and relationships. So, you know, so often today, youth pastors, youth practitioners are are emphasizing community within the youth ministry. And that's important. I mean, 16 year olds need that 26 year olds need that to be in community with others who are in their life stage but one of my life mantras is that balance is something we swing through on our way to the other extreme and in our effort to offer community and youth ministry I think we've swung to the extreme and we've lost some of the really important intergenerational community that 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 needs to balance that and so my friend our friend at Fuller uh, Chap Clark he says a lot of brilliant things but I think one of the most brilliant things he said recently is we need a new five to one ratio Mm-hmm. And what he means by that is, you know, as a, as a youth leader, as a young adult leader, um, children's ministry, et cetera, we often have, as we have events coming up, we think, oh, you know what, I want one adult for every five young people. I want one small group leader, one counselor for every five kids. Well, what Chap is saying is, what if we reverse that and have not one adult for five kids, but five adults for each young person? Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I explain that to youth pastors, I can see them looking kind of overwhelmed. Like, I'm having a hard enough time recruiting one adult for five, and now you want me to recruit five? No, we're not talking about five small group leaders. We're not talking about five Bible study or Sunday school teachers. We're talking about, as we say, my husband and I say in our family to our own teenagers, we're talking about five adults who are on your team. Five adults who know your name, who are praying for you, who are showing up at that soccer match, at that hockey tournament, who are going to your piano recital, etc. And so that's the kind of community that we've seen is so powerful, um, not only for young people, but the whole church benefits then. I, I can see you're getting kind of emotional, Sarah. I, what what touches you here? Um, I just, I think about uh, the importance of a community and how... Um, my mom exemplified yeah. that type of community, uh, not only in my life, but in the lives of others. Yeah. So um, I just, yeah, I, I definitely affirm kind yeah. of what, you've say, yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, and I, you know, I imagine with, in your mom's case, um, you know, she poured into young people and that transformed them. Mm-hmm. But what we see time and time again is how adults are also changed Absolutely. when they spend time with young people. Yeah. So, you know, we started our research looking at how the church and adults can benefit young people, but what we found along the way is how young people Mm -hmm. also change adults. So, really beautiful.